Welcome to Easy TV. I'm Michael Davies, and today I will be going over the Users and Roles tabs in the Easy Packs archive. These two tabs work together to assign capabilities to the users in the system as well as manage restrictions for each type of user. I'll demonstrate how to add a new user to the archive, assign roles to that new user, create new roles and role groups, and create new AET groups. All of these features make it easy to tailor the accessibility of the information on the archive to each type of user. Starting in the Users tab, a new user can be created by clicking the Add User icon in the top left corner. A dialog box appears with three empty fields including User ID, Password, and Repeat Password. I will add a new user called Mike Tech, along with a password for this user. and click Save. Mike Tech now appears in the list of users on the PAX archive, along with three icons to the right of the user ID and a blank area under Assigned Roles. Starting from left to right, the three icons are Change Password, Delete User, and Manage Roles. I want to make Mike Tech a web user so that he can log into the packs and perform basic tasks such as search for patients in the folder tab. So I will click the manage roles icon and check web user. I also want Mike Tech to have the capabilities of a technician, so I'll check the tech box, then exit. The two new roles now appear under the assigned roles area in the Mike Tech row. I would now like to further refine the capabilities of Mike Tech and I can accomplish this by entering the Roles tab and creating a new role. You'll see that there's already a list of roles in the Easy Packs archive and each role has a set of icons next to its name along with three groups titled Web, DICOM, and AET. The first two icons are for editing or deleting the existing role. The icon under the Web group allows the user to specify web permissions granted to the specific user. These permissions range from reading or writing files on the archive to being able to edit or delete other files amongst other functions. Under the DICOM group column is a series of checkboxes which indicate whether or not the role has DICOM capabilities. Finally, under AET there are icons in the rows of only a select few of the roles. This indicates that the AET checkbox was enabled in the Edit Roles dialog box, thus giving users with these particular roles the ability to interact with either all application entities or just the application entities specified by the admin. Clicking the icon allows the admin to choose which AET groups the user can interact with. To add an AET group, go into the Application Entities tab, then click on the AE Groups subtab. You may then add a new AET group by clicking the icon and typing in the name and description of your choice. Once the new group name appears, click the Assign AETs icon to choose which application entities are made available to users in this group. Before I assign this AET group to my new user, I'm going to return to the Roles tab and enable the AET checkbox under the Tech role name. I will now click the AET icon in the Tech row and enable the checkmark in the box next to the new AET group. New role groups can be added in the Group subtab by clicking the New Group icon. Groups can have a custom name and description along with a color code. This makes it easier to distinguish different groups from one another within each role. For example, I'll create a group called Read for all roles with read-only capabilities and will assign it a blue color. If the role has the read checkbox enabled, it will now have the blue color checkbox area in its row. Finally, I'll create a new role and name it read only. With the description saying user may read but not write, edit, or delete. I will then enable the web and read role group checkboxes. 
As you can see, the read column is now highlighted in blue, indicating that this is a read-only user role. Next, I'll click the Web Permissions icon and enable Folder Read, Trash Read, User Read, and Roles Read. When I click the X, the role will automatically be updated. Next, I'll go back to the Users tab, come down to Mic Tech, click the Manage Roles icon, and enable the new Read Only role. The new role is now added to the Assigned Roles area next to Mic Tech. I'll log in with the newly created Mic Tech user to demonstrate the restrictions of this user. For starters, in the Folder tab, you'll notice that a set of three icons is missing that include New Patient, Delete, and Move. This is because we've placed a restriction on this user that disallows any of these tasks to be performed on these studies in the archive. The next limitation appears when we attempt to view studies from any other application entity besides Web Portal, which is the only application entity we allotted this user access to. In the Trash tab, a set of icons labeled Empty Trash and Delete Permanently are removed to restrict any of these actions. This particular user can only view or restore items in the trash, but not delete those items. In the Application Entities tab, the new AET icon is not available, and so Mike Tech cannot create any new AE titles. He also cannot delete any of the titles. Under the sub-tab AE Groups, this user can only view the groups and cannot edit, delete, or add any groups. Finally, under the Roles and Users tabs, there are no editing, deleting, or creating new users capabilities, but rather only viewing capabilities. Roles designated as Hidden Roles will not be visible to Mike Tech. All of these restrictions ensure that certain users cannot tamper with the EasyPacks archive, thus protecting the information stored in it. It also protects sensitive information that is only to be seen by designated users and empowers the administrator in charge of the packs.